Imagine the headline, Patients Dying from New Disease, Cause Unknown, with accompanying pictures of devastated family members and doctors. This might sound familiar, but I'm not talking about COVID-19. It's the late 1960s. There were no headlines. And patients weren't people. They were cats. Indeed, cats were dying and their owners were devastated. And veterinarians were helpless to save them. Eventually, it was determined that the disease was caused by a coronavirus, a coronavirus specific to cats. It turns out the feline population, including both domestic cats and wild cats, were experiencing a pandemic. Today, this cat coronavirus that causes a disease called feline infectious peritonitis, referred to as FIP, remains the most important infectious cause of death in cats. Unlike COVID-19, there was not an outpouring of funding to solve the feline pandemic. It's very difficult to raise money to address diseases in cats and improve feline health. Despite this, quite a lot has been learned about the feline coronavirus that turned out to be directly applicable to the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, referred to as SARS-2, the virus that causes the disease we know as COVID-19. The concepts of social distancing, super spreaders, and asymptomatic carriers were already known. Human medicine and animal medicine are separate fields requiring separate degrees, but there's an amazing level of overlap. Humans are animals after all. In fact, we veterinarians take great pride in the fact that we are trained to treat many species, while our physician colleagues only have to worry about treating one species. More and more, people are recognizing the concept of one health, the idea that human health and animal health and the health of our planet are inextricably linked. The COVID-19 pandemic is a perfect example. What we know about coronavirus in cats has helped us to anticipate what we might see in humans as SARS-2 spread around the globe. And the vast amount we have learned about COVID-19 in people will hopefully benefit cats in the future. Let's dive in. I was a postdoctoral fellow in the 1990s at the University of California at Davis and worked with a veterinary clinician and scientist, Dr. Nels Pearson. He's a big, gruff Danish man who loves cats and has been studying feline diseases caused by coronaviruses since they were identified nearly 50 years ago. His passion to treat and prevent FIP is itself infectious. Anyone who works with him cannot help but join his cause to eliminate this deadly disease of cats. While it's a fascinating disease, it's also one of the worst ways for a cat to, to die. But first, a quick disclaimer. When I talk about coronaviruses in cats, I'm not talking about COVID-19. Coronavirus is an umbrella term for a family of viruses that cause respiratory and intestinal infections in many different animals. The coronavirus that causes COVID-19 is just one of many coronaviruses that affects people. FCOV is a coronavirus that affects cats. Yes, you can give your cat COVID-19. Cats may have clinical signs, but usually not severe. But there are no cases where a cat has given a human FCOV or SARS-2. So here's how it works and how it differs between people and cats. When a human gets infected with the virus that causes COVID-19, the virus replicates, but it makes mistakes. So the replicates are not identical to the original. This is how mutants emerge like the Delta variant. The person may or may not get sick, but the variant can then be transmitted, sometimes more effectively, to other people. The situation in cats is quite different. 
we do not see new variants of the feline coronavirus sweeping around the gl globe, causing waves of illness. But sometimes the disease will mutate within an individual cat and cause the super fatal FIP disease. I compare it to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Robert Louis Stevenson's novel about an outwardly good man who turns into a horrible evil version of himself. Dr. Jekyll is the relatively harmless feline coronavirus, FCOV, that causes mild intestinal disease. But FCOV can turn into Mr. Hyde, a highly fatal, horrible mutation of the coronavirus that causes uncontrolled inflammation and often leads to leaking of fluid from the blood into the chest or abdomen of the cat. It's estimated that between 6 and 11% of cats who get FCOV will experience a mutation that causes FIP. It's more common in younger cats, but it can theoretically occur at any age. It's also more common in purebred cats, which suggests there could be a genetic component to the disease. But again, unlike COVID-19 in humans, once the virus mutates inside the cat, it's unlikely to spread that mutation to another cat. Here's why this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde situation is a problem. First of all, it's random. We don't know which cat will go from the mild intestinal FCOV form to deadly FIP. Second, it's hard to test. Most cats have had the harmless version, so most cats would come up positive on a test there's no easy way to tell whether it's the harmless version or the fatal version. And that makes it hard to diagnose. It's frustrating for both the owner and the veterinarian. The cat is miserable, but we don't necessarily know why. There have been many attempts to create a vaccine for feline coronavirus, but unfortunately, none of them have worked well. And some have even caused more severe infections. However, what we've learned from cats has been very useful in humans. For example, over the past decades, we have learned that coronaviruses are very tricky. When a cat or a person gets infected by a virus, it's basically a race between the virus and the immune response. We know the feline coronavirus makes proteins that trick the cat's immune system and slows it down. So the virus gets a head start in the race. This is true for SARS-2 as well. With this head start, the virus can replicate to a higher level. And when the immune system finally gets going, it causes more inflammation. This is a big part of the cause of the fatal FIP disease and the severe form of COVID-19 that affects the lungs. There are many other similarities between cats and humans. For cats, we know there are super spreaders. One cat producing very high levels of virus can quickly then infect many other cats, creating an outbreak. Cats can also be asymptomatic carriers, so they appear healthy. And we may not know that they are shedding virus at all, yet they can infect others. We know from our research with cats that social distancing is key. For example, if you have a family of 12 living in a two bedroom apartment and one of those individuals gets infected with COVID-19, it's very likely that most of the others will get infected as well. Animal shelters face a very similar problem. If you bring together 20 cats into a shelter, a couple will probably be shedding the virus. It's shocking how quickly it can spread from cat to cat. But the shelters have done an incredible job managing this. Their strategy has been to quickly adopt cats out or to place them in foster homes. The goal is not to keep them in the shelter if at all possible. We need to keep the cats apart, just like we need to keep people apart to protect them from COVID-19. So how do we treat the feline coronavirus? Well, you may remember the drug remdesivir. It was all over the news. Researchers originally tested it against HIV and Ebola. 
but it didn't work. Gilead spent a ton of money to develop it, but they shelved it. The hope was they would find a use for it later. Then Dr. Nels Peterson, the vet at UC Davis I mentioned before, thought, let's try it against FIP. He and his colleagues showed that remdesivir and a closely related drug not only extended the lives of cats with FIP, but could actually cure them. This news was celebrated at a conference in the fall of 2019. But with COVID-19 emerging, Gilead paused all uses for veterinary applications. This is a tragic story. We were so close to having an effective way to treat FIP, but the rug was pulled out from underneath us. As a result, a black market of drugs has developed. Cat owners who want to treat their cat who has FIP can buy the drug online from outside the US, but the drugs are very expensive and the quality is uncertain. Veterinarians in the US cannot participate in the treatment of cats with these drugs because they are not FDA approved. What has happened is that cat owners have come together as a community to share their experiences, give advice, and help one another as they struggle to acquire the drugs on the black market and treat cats with FIP. The idea of lay individuals participating in scientific data collection can be very powerful and is called community science. The situation with FIP and black market drugs is an impressive example of community medicine. Unfortunately, veterinarians have been completely cut out of this process and are largely unable to determine best treatment practices, such as how much and how often the drug should be given and how we should monitor for adverse side effects. The full re-engagement of veterinarians will not be possible until we have an FDA approved drug. Finally, what have we learned about preventing coronaviruses in cats? In cats, we have had a complete lack of success creating vaccines because commonly used approaches and even cutting edge approaches have not worked. Part of the reason is an important difference between cats and people. The vaccines against the SARS-2 virus have primarily targeted the spike protein on the surface of the virus, and this has worked exceptionally well. But this has not worked in cats and has even caused disease to accelerate. But let's think about how people could help cats. We've talked about cat research and how it has informed human medicine, but let's go back to the concept of one health and the reciprocal benefits of applying what we know across species. How might human research inform cat medicine? There has been an explosion of scientific research and learning from COVID-19 that we can now apply back to cats. We have a better understanding of the virus, how it works, and why it mutates. Hopefully, FDA-approved drugs that are effective in treating humans will be available and effective at treating cats. New vaccine technology, even if the target on the virus is different, could make a dramatic difference. In my research lab, we're working on a vaccine that targets the harmless version of FCOV. Previous research really focused on Mr. Hyde. We are focusing on Dr. Jekyll. Our goal is to prevent the harmless virus from mutating into the fatal version. Like many groups studying coronaviruses that infect animals, when the human coronavirus pandemic broke, we pivoted and applied what we knew to humans. The work on COVID-19 is driving technology at a remarkable pace, and this can be exploited to find answers for cats as well. Our passion is to improve the health of cats and finally address the feline coronavirus pandemic. And this has only grown more intense. 
What does this mean for you? Well, for now, here are some tips to keep you and your cat safe and healthy. First of all, practice social distancing and keep your cat away from other cats as much as possible. Keep your environment and your cat's litter box clean. If you are infected with COVID-19, isolate yourself from your cat. If you already have a cat and are considering adopting a new one, consult your veterinarian. Introduce the new cat slowly and monitor their health throughout this transition. And consider becoming a cat foster parent. Pet owners and veterinarians can help prevent the spread of disease from animal to animal, animal to human, and human to animals. Physicians and veterinarians can share knowledge and collaborate on research. And you can protect yourself, other people, and your cat by getting vaccinated against COVID-19. In the near future, I hope cats will share in our successes with new and effective vaccines and treatments and that their coronavirus pandemic will finally come to an end. Thank you. Thank you.